Hey guys, John here with Survival Dispatch, and joining to me today is Joel Graves and Matt Tate from American Survival Company, and we're going to talk about small blade safety. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, we go into the woods, a lot of guys carry knives and they start working, and you know, I think that's where most injuries come from. You know, oh, we, we start talking far. about survival situations and gunshot wounds and things like that. You usually see more issues when it comes to a small blade, you know, a lot of whittling work and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of these guys, you know, instruct on a weekly and monthly basis at American Survival Co. And so, you know, they see a lot of oh, slips, yeah. nicks, and things like that. Yeah, so, you know, this video is just to kind of bring up some of the safety aspects that really need to be addressed when it comes to using a blade uh, around the campsite. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're not talking about machetes and axes and stuff right now. We're talking, you know, small blades, because that's usually where most of the accidents yeah. happen. So, uh, Matt, why don't you start off with, you know, just talking a little bit about, you know, what you kind of have seen before. Okay, uh, oftentimes uh, I'll see cuts where people are cutting towards themselves. And usually what we see is cuts on the digits or on the hands. Um, it could be very, you know, a lot worse than that. Um, but that's typically what I'm seeing is somebody, you know, a slip or being careless or cutting right into the direction of their finger. So one of my last private classes, it was a seven day class and it was adults. They were awesome, uh, married couple coming out, getting some skills and they were very new to knife work mm -hmm. and they were very diligent. Of course, we talked about all the stuff we're about to share on yeah. the video. It's my point is perfect practice makes perfect because exactly. when this stuff really matters, it seems simple. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And the more advanced you get, you cut corners, but you're still being very safe. Like there's a lot of Swedish knife carving techniques where you do cut toward yourself, but you, you have to use your body smartly in order to do that. Yeah. It's when you're stupid, tired, and hungry. Like we, like today is a pretty hot day. Mm -hmm. If we haven't been drinking water, our IQ drops. And then you get lazy, you get tired, and you start cutting those corners. Yep. And yep. in that particular instance, my student on the very last day, the last thing that she was whittling, she cut herself pretty good and it, on the hand. Yep. And r immediately after she's like, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Um, and so even if you're a veteran of carving, it's always good to brush up on these things and hear them and, and think about that, especially when you're a little bit stressed out in training. Yeah. So, so let's talk about a couple safety rules okay. that we try to adhere to, you know, at all times. Number one, like, you know, like you, both of you just said, try to almost always try to cut away from you, yep, you know, uh, that's the best way to, to keep the, uh, the edge of the blade going the other way, just in case you slip or hit a knot or anything. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times what I see is somebody will be on a knot and it'll yeah. be super hard and then they'll finally get through it and it's like, whoosh, mm -hmm. it's just gone at that point. And if they're cutting to them, that's usually when it comes and it gets a thumb or a hand or something like that. What would be some other safety, you know, protocol tips that you would go with as well? So thinking in terms of like that going out, uh, that's where, you know, we think in terms of what they call the blood circle uh, or the blood triangle. But specifically, if I'm standing here, I don't want to pull out my knife and start digging into, even if I'm cutting in a safe, powerful cutting direction to where it comes away from me, my buddy gets stuck in the neck like this a terrible thing right so we want to be very aware of people around us uh, there's two places for a knife uh, that is either in its sheath or in my hand your hand whoever's using it uh, but i see that a lot too people leaving on stuff the on the ground especially working on friction fires they just set it down and you know there's a 10 year old kid with his dad taking the class you know right by the thing and he's not paying attention so uh, that's definitely a big one what else joe so mining that 180 and what i tell my students is if you're it's just like being on on the range with a gun like you're pulling the trigger you're responsible for where that bullet goes yeah if somebody else is not paying attention they're not carving but they're walking up to talk to you like if, if we all had our knives out we yeah. would not be this close no. yeah i i might turn my back to them they don't know what i'm doing they're not paying attention to that i'm the one that's wielding the danger so it's it's your responsibility so we got to mine that 180 degrees I also tell my students, we all have knives out here. You don't want to turn bushcraft into a knife fight. You know? right. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. And it could happen really easy, especially if you're all crowded up yeah. like we you know, tend to want to be as humans. But mm -hmm. um, the other part is a lot of times we're doing crafts or chores where we, we like to sit down and take yeah, a load off. Absolutely. And that exposes us to other dangers that could be very serious, especially like with our femoral artery yeah. or if, if you know, 
you you got the anatomy there's other stuff you don't want to stab yeah. down there um and so a lot of times you'll we'll talk about the blood triangle um obviously if i was sitting down and i'm cutting in here that's not good i always like to try to be off to the side and i'm still minding what's around me who's yeah. around me what's going on but if i were to slip off i'm not in danger of cutting my yep. legs even being out and past as you're sitting down being just out past your knees so that if it does slip if it does slip it goes nowhere else nowhere. really yep. yeah yeah absolutely and let's talk about a couple steps that people can take you know with regards to to safety as well like i see a lot of people tend to get really far away from their body they mm -hmm. try to get way out here where you start to lose a lot of control yep. instead of keeping it real close where you can almost even keep your arms like on your on your ribs or on your hips yeah. it gives you a lot of stability especially when we're doing small knife work yep, a lot of control they tend to get way out here where you know slips and you know things like that really tend to occur mm -hmm. uh, what are a couple others that you guys see i a, a lot of that the, one of my ones i see probably the most is like when we're doing certain things oh, when we're trying to drill yeah. holes or two things right people have a natural tendency without any training to like want to do it on their hand and it's like, no, please don't do that. And kind of like what we're talking about in some of the other videos today, like like the ego, checking the yeah. ego out the door, like that's a perfect example. I've had students go, you know, I'm not babysitting them, I'm just guiding them with advice. And, oh, I do it all the time. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's sure kind of what I was hoping to avoid. Um, but that's a big one. And we have anvils all around us. Like if you just think, you know, dimensionally about your environment like i i can drill a hole up against that tree up against yeah. that tree and not ever risk <laughs> stabbing a <laughs> knife blade through my hand and if we we haven't mentioned it but that's rule number one for me have a sharp knife a sharp knife yeah. is always better there than a go. dull knife yeah, and it absolutely. takes less effort and energy and uh you'll you'll get cut less because you're having to use less force yeah. but when uh that's that's probably the most common one i see that makes me cringe I'm like stop yeah. i see that a lot with people making the hearth boards or the fire yeah. boards trying to carve that divot in it and from back whenever i was less experienced i might know that it hurts really bad when you get stabbed by doing that that happened once <laughs> once that happened uh it's never happened again so like you said there's always something you can put it against if it's the ground moving the object instead of the knife yep. uh you know that's always you should really never option. move both at the same time either right. yeah. you know um all right let's talk a little bit about the blood triangle Matt. why don't you break that down okay so uh the blood triangle uh is we're sitting down um like joel mentioned earlier oftentimes uh it's it's we're creatures of comfort that's what we're going to do so whether it's sitting on a log a stump or in a chair on the porch whittling uh to get that blade out past uh the plane of those knees to where if you do have a slip, you're not coming in and hitting that femoral artery because with an arterial bleed, I mean, three minutes, you're done, you know, and that's that's not very much time to either A, help yourself or somebody to be able to help you. So if you follow, you know, those rules, you're looking out for the people around you and you're looking out for yourself, you're sitting down. If we sit down, we it's easy, you know, we get comfortable. That's why we sat down was to get comfortable. We just wanna make sure that we don't get to a point to where we're too comfortable in cutting up close yep. uh, instead of out past where our knees are. And if you want to talk blood uh, circle as well, Joel. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the 180 degrees that you're responsible for, essentially. And so if I can reach him, and, and I even like to add more for whatever kind of blade I'm using. Absolutely. like This, from me to John, I'm safe here. If I were to, it's not going to get him. This is no good. And I'll change my 180 degrees from that point. If he encroaches on my space, it's my responsibility, I'm the one using the knife. But even better is just to spread out. And especially when I have younger children in classes, they, it's something that they're so used to get, kind of getting penned up in, yeah. in a classroom setting that that's what they want to do. And <laughs> I see all kinds of crazy stuff. Like uh, maybe we're doing a plant walk and they just want to sharpen a stick and they're literally walking. Oh my and, goodness, and yeah. Using their knife, it's never a good idea to trip over a stump and all kinds yeah. of crazy things can happen. But I'm bringing that up because if you don't have these kinds of skills, it's very easy to overlook like some of the things that you got to talk about with safety because it's like, right. yeah, that's kind of common sense, but not to the nine-year-old who's never been trusted with a butter knife and now he gets to come to a bushcraft class. Right. So 
it's always important to reiterate those and train even an adult because when this stuff is real your iq drops and you it's just got to be ingrained and second nature and two things playing off of what you said a little bit earlier uh that iq drop and if we're building those good habits through muscle memory and we're not having to process as much to think about being safe it's just how we always do it uh we don't take shortcuts the first time you do it becomes easier and easier so we establish good habits perfect practice makes perfect and the second thing is uh, i really want to hammer home is if I am doing something and I lay my knife down and a 12 year old comes over and steps on that and gets a knife through his feet or his foot, that's not his fault. I'm responsible for that. Just like you said, every round that leaves uh, the barrel, you're responsible for. Anything that happens with my knife, I I'm responsible for. So that's, that could be really, really serious. So One more thing that we wanted to mention with regards to knives is how you hand somebody a knife. Hey Matt, can I borrow your knife? Sure. As you can see, Matt handed me number one, the handle first with the spine to the inside of his hand. It makes sure that even if I was to rip it out of his hand fast, the blade's not going to cut the palm of his hand. And also he's not handing me a blade. So if I wasn't, if I wasn't looking when I asked him like, hey Matt, can I have a knife? I'm not grabbing a blade either. So by, the way, by handling it this way, you make sure that nobody ever has a blade touching or facing their hand. I don't think we can impress that enough that you're responsible for your blade. Yeah, and, it, and it's one of those things where, you know, we just wanted to make this quick video because uh, it's something that we see quite a bit in classes. And, you know, if you follow the, the kind of rules and the outlines that uh, that we've kind of laid out here, you know, it's, it's you're definitely gonna be practicing safe knife, uh, right. you know, working, you know, and, uh, and that's really what's important because the last thing we want is for an accident to happen, you know, while we're having a class or while you're out uh, you know, if it was a survival situation, you know, a bad cut yeah. to the hand where you might not be able to utilize it as much, uh, infection, you know, it could make yeah. everything 10 times harder uh, on you at that moment and you definitely don't want that. Right. So, um, so guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. Uh, leave any comments that you might have with regards to, to knife safety below and we'll make sure we get to those. And uh, until next time, be safe.